ladies and gentlemen, my friend and yours, Miss Shaw Reynolds. Hello, everyone. How you doing? I am doing great. It's a beautiful day, and things are going well. And overall, things are going well in the animal world. Yeah, you were uh, telling me right before we hopped on air that things are kind of starting to get back to normal, that y'all are planning some big stuff right now. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's so good to get that sense of normalcy. I remember when uh, I met you last year to pick up the Wolfstock 2020 shirts and I accidentally gave you a hug and I was I, I didn't mean to it was just like a spur of the moment thing and I was driving home thinking like I might have killed Shaw I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm I, I felt so bad I felt so bad but it, it's good now that we can meet and it's we don't have any of those worries right. it's nice but life is life is improving uh more social activities are happening uh we are able to start our fundraisers again but if I could back up just a bit and tell people what Animal Alliance is. Yes. Uh, Animal Alliance of East Kentucky, we are a nonprofit uh, organization that provides low cost spay and neuter to Floyd, Johnson, Martin, and McGoffin counties. And for $25 to $30, depending on income, you can get a spay or neuter plus a rabies shot for your pet. And, and that's a deal that nobody can beat. I mean, I, I know that vets around the area try to make it as cheap as possible yes. for people, but there's they, they still got bills to pay as they well. They have to make a living too. Yeah, but it's so wonderful for people to have this option because it's it's a problem right now everywhere, but especially in our community. I mean, the shelters are just overran the right shelter, now. And, you know, to, a shelter shouldn't be a dumping place for puppies and kittens, nor should no. the side of the road or a mountaintop or something. And we have made a, a bit of a difference. I've had uh, two shelters tell me that they have noticed a very slight decrease in the amount of puppies and kittens being dropped by. Nice. And we like to think that we've had a small hand in that. In fact, in the four years that we've been in business, we are almost at the thousand mark for oh, the number of animals wow. we have spayed and neutered. So when we hit it, we are over 900 now. And when we get to 1,000, we're going to do a special little celebration. We're putting together a gift basket for whoever's pet that makes number 1,000. And we're going to have some uh, stuff that special offers for people just who like to wow. support us. Oh, I bet that feels so good. It is amazing. And, and, I want it to be an inspiration to anyone else who wants to start something like that because everybody's like, well, I don't know anything about this. How do I do this? We knew nothing about it. We are four women who all work full time. We do this on our own. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants to contact me about starting their own version of Animal Alliance, you know, you find your own name for it because that one's our name. <laughs> but you can... Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the things we did wrong so you don't have to do it wrong, you know. And okay. um, I would love to see surrounding counties get it. And one question we get asked a lot is, you know, well, why don't you serve other counties? Well, that's because there's four of us, and we all work full time, and we do this on yeah. our own. We raise all the funds on our own. We get no funding, you know, from the state or from the government. Everything we do, we pay for ourselves, you know. And, and the thirty dollars that you pay for your spay or neuter, we're paying also into that. You know, we're paying the rest of what the vet would charge. So. It's constant fundraising. Yeah, you, you make it such a personal experience whenever people are working with y'all. Even, you know, raising the money, like you said, that how you do it all on your own, whether you're selling the t-shirts or doing the events, it's y'all there working the events. Oh, yes. And I mean, I can't imagine how busy y'all stay with just being four of you and doing this, something like something like this as a side gig. I mean, yes. something like this should be a full-time job, you would think, with how much think. time and effort has to go into it. So for y'all to, for four of y'all, to do both is amazing. Yes. And fortunately, we, and, and that's another reason we like to keep it small, because the more people, because you know, people's like, oh, well, we'll join your organization and we'll start another county. But the more people you bring into it, the messier yeah. things can get. Yes. And the four of us are like sisters, you know, we are, well, and two actually are sisters, but we, but we constantly remind each other that animals come first. Mm -hmm. And because everybody has differences of opinion sometimes, but we have never brought that to the table. You know, we, and I know that I annoy them you know, <laughs> because I'm just like, let's do this, let's do this. But everyone, they're so supportive. We all support each other and, and we give each other a voice and we give each other a chance to do what they can because the animals really do come first. Did y'all know each other before you started this organization or like how did the four of y'all meet up? Yes, three of us were actually on the board that got the Johnson County Shelter started. Okay. And then uh, the, the other one was a friend of the other two, the sisters, and mm -hmm. I met her through them. 
And then when I moved, I wasn't on the board anymore. And then once the shelter got started, you know, we stepped away to let it go off on its own. And I remember one of the members said, we need to do something else. And I thought, yeah. And we started throwing out ideas and spay and neuter is a huge issue in this region. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we don't really have, you know, at that time there was, there's a couple now people who help with spay and neuter, but we thought we need to do this. So we started doing research and we found counties that either didn't have a shelter or had a shelter, but were very, very poor in terms of median income level. So we wrote a proposal, got our nonprofit, got started, and the rest is history. Wow. I mean, it, it's, it's such an amazing thing for somebody to want to take on a responsibility that big. We need a lot more people like that in the yes. world. And, and you can't look at the huge picture. You have to look every day, what am I doing? And mm-hmm. because when I think about all the abused animals just in this region and the animals that don't get health care and stuff, it, it can be overwhelming. And that's how a lot of people get in over their heads. And we constantly raise funds because one of our goals was we won't get in debt to the veterinarians, you know, because sometimes rescues will owe three and four thousand dollars. And how do you ever get out of that? You just yeah. it's, so, it's so hard. So, you know, we our, our goals is, you know, we pay our bill at the end of the month in full. You know, we have to because we want to keep a good relationship with our vets. We also want to make sure they have a living wage. You know, it's not fair, you know, for them to do this for free for us, even though they give us a good discount. Mm-hmm. And. It's just important to keep in mind your daily goal. You know, just for today, I'm going to help these animals, you know. Yeah. And that's how we are now at almost 1,000 animals. We we average probably maybe eight a week. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. So, so what? how does somebody go about the process uh, if they want to get their dog or cat spayed or neutered? Okay. If you live in our, our four-county region, and if you don't, you can still write us on our webpage, and we have a list of resources in other counties because we want to help everyone that's cool okay and uh we we can probably hook you up with someone else but if you're in our four county region floyd johnson martin and mcgoffin we have a website aaeky.org so you can get on there and download and um, run off the application fill it out send us the copay mail it to us and we'll get back to you within a week that's, see, that's another thing that I think is so cool about y'all's organization is there's not a huge waiting list or anything. It's, it, it's pretty spur of the moment. Yes. And, you know, sometimes that's what people need. Well, and and, and we'll get emergencies where sometimes people do wait because sometimes even to save that $30 is hard, and we realize that. Yeah. And um, they'll say, well, my dog might be pregnant, or my, you know, and we're like, okay, let's see what we can do. You know, it's... Get them in as fast as you can. Let the vet look at them. Yeah. Um, the only time, like when you get on the website and our applications are not on there, means that we're out of funds. We take the applications down because we don't want that piling up, you know, and okay. people waiting three and four months. And it's happened a couple of times, and people have been very patient. Um, they'll write us. They're like, you know, anything coming up? Well, last year was really bad because we couldn't do anything face to face you know we couldn't do fundraisers but we did sell our t-shirts still and heather at mountain muse i'm gonna give her credit for giving us a design and to say the year we supported from home yeah our t-shirts are one of our biggest fundraisers our t-shirts keep us afloat in fact our t-shirts kept us afloat last year yeah th- these these right here were awesome uh, th- uh this one was the first one that y'all did and it was kind of similar to the 2019 one but i loved how this one was just the blue and turquoise and whatever other yeah. colors are in that it was just it was so different and unique yeah. and that's what i loved so much about last year's shirts we always this has been our most complimented shirt we've got because people love the blue people and so i'm like oh what do we do for this year now but um yeah it's going to be kind of hard we yeah. have some designs in i mean we have the design already because we had it for last year we just pushed it to this year and then heather gave us this design bless her heart and i, I love the cats and the dogs wearing the headphones too um but we've got a couple of co- color combinations in mind it'll always be tie-dye it'll always be funky because it's Wolfstock peace love spay neuter yeah so that, that's what we do such a cool name too yes, yes. So, so uh you told me some big news right before we hopped on air here, and and, and I was kind of wanting to s- save it a little bit, but uh, mm-hmm. I'll let you do the honors. Let's just go ahead. Uh, I am so, so happy to announce that we are having Wolfstock this year. I am yes. so happy. Yes. It will be August 20th. That's on a Friday at the Mountain Arts Center. And so far, uh, we have Beck in the Starlight Review. We have Sean Whiting, uh, Coltown Dixie, 
uh, Jen Tackett, and there's a couple of others that we'll be announcing. Nice. Yes. I, no, that's a good lineup. That's right a great there. lineup. That's you know, a dang good Sean lineup. Sean and Jen, uh, Sean and uh, Beck will always be at Wolfstock. They are amazingly supportive of what we do. They are mm-hmm. the ones who say, "You tell us when, and we will be there." You know, they and so they are Wolfstock. They will always be my my. Go tos. Some of the nicest people on the planet too. I, I've only talked with uh, Jen over the phone, but just a genuinely yeah. nice human being. And yeah. Sean, uh, what do you think about his new music video <gasps> that he released the other day? Well, I wrote that how much I loved his uh, co-star in it, Zena, his dog, and I yeah. said I knew that nothing would happen to Zena because it was Sean. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I love Sean. His voice is amazing. Everything he sings, he just belts it out, and, and it's. It is one of the most perfect voices I've ever heard. I just it really he, is. And, and I've always told him, I was like, you're my favorite male voice, you know. And and Beck is my favorite female voice. And to have them both there, they're just and and they're just so sweet. They'll help out any way they can, you know. If I did something next week and I needed somebody there, I would not hesitate to call and say, "Can you come?" And, and they probably would. So so where is a Wolfstock 2021 20, going to be at? Mountain Arts Center. Nice. Mountain Art Center. And uh, still working on a couple of people for the lineup because I like to have my regulars, but then I also like to bring in a couple of new, you know, Coal Town Dixie. This will be their first time there. And there's a couple more that will be their first time there. So I'm just finalizing. Uh, it's, it feels so good to, like, actually be talking about doing Wolfstock again because well, oh, last year it just it, it broke my heart for y'all because I, I was I was really worried about the funding and all of that so to know that the t-shirts kept y'all flowing and I've seen yes. so many people buying them too that was so cool that it didn't happen yet people still bought tons of those shirts still support us and in fact we last year we did have to take our applications down and the t-shirts brought them back up again we might we wow. ended up with the t-shirts <laughs> So, yeah, and I appreciate everybody. We've had people out of state order them, you know, and I, one year I sent them to like seven states, you know, Dang. because we mail, you know, if anybody can't get to us. And we still have some of these for sale if anyone wants them. They're $25. You know, keep your collection going, you know, start it going. And um, so you can either write us on our website or you can message me, Shaw Reynolds, and um, I'll hook you up with a shirt. Yeah, the, the Mountain Arts Center is still up and going, and that's a good thing to see, too, is with them yes. booking shows and stuff like that. What's the uh, seating capacity going to be like? Right they now said? it's 300. Okay. But I heard last night that as restrictions lift, they may raise it you know, a little bit more. Nice. Um, and the way they're selling them now, it's... Um, what, like festival seating, you know, you yeah. were having a signed ticket to a seat because I don't know how they do that. But like the thing I went to when... Um, the last concert I went to there, you just go find your seat. You know, everybody yeah. likes a different spot. So, yeah. Know, just. And, and, that, and that's kind of a neat experience, too, because, yeah, I went to a show last year during all that, and that's the way it was. You just kind of sat wherever you wanted to, basically. And I think people appreciate that. They do. I mean, I know people that, well, there's not a bad seat oh, in the no. Mount Arts Center. Not, you know, I have been to concerts where I've been at the very end of the rows, and you, they've got those big screens. You can see, you can hear. It's just as good as being down in the front row. Yeah, even then, like I don't know the arc. I don't understand architecture. I'm not that smart. But how they built that place, like even if you're in the main back, it still feels like you're right on top of the singer. Yes. Yeah. It's, yes. I, I, I don't know how what type of wizardry they done there, but yeah, there's not a bad seat in the Mountain Arts Center. Mountain One of the Arts best Magic. places to see a concert. The best sound system, you know, yeah. and, and that's another reason that. Um, it just makes me proud to have Wolf stuck there because they make it just the best concert experience. You know, the sound people are just the best that anywhere. You know, I, I don't mm-hmm. think you could go to a place that would have better sound people. And they they put such work into it. And Joe Campbell gets midnight texts from me where I'm panicking about something. He's like, nah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So he puts up with me and that earns him a star. So, yeah. What, what made y'all want to go about this uh, Wolf stock deal to start raising money for your organization that was my idea because mm-hmm. two of my favorite things in the world are live music local music and animals and where before we even started animal alliance you know i would go listen to these bands that's how i met sean that's how i met beck that's how i met everybody else and i'm like we could put something together and this is where the other board members are amazing because they back me up on this you know because it costs money. You, know, yeah. you have to put out money, and we tend not to spend money. We want to make money. <laughs> yeah. And 
but they thought it was a fine idea and they let me run with it and um we i designed the first t-shirt i had a friend that one um yeah i, I said here's what i want it to be and here's what i want it to say and he kept sending me um where he would do a mock-up of stuff and and i'm just like no yes yes i, I was thinking who did that one and it just yeah i always wanted them to be the same uh quotes and stuff in every year like peace love spay neuter it's got to have mm-hmm. a dog and a cat it's got to have something about music and so there's a theme that goes on with each Wolfstock t-shirt but they're all different yeah you know? it's, yeah that, that, that's what i like about them is it's the same but different mm-hmm. and the who would you say was the artist behind most of these designs they're at mountain muse uh heather heather she, she did this one and she did this shirt we're putting out this year okay mm-hmm. so uh but we, we actually had a, a contest one year where we had, I think it was a teenager one, the, hmm. the thing. And so, you know, it's, and, and, so and as talent. we get better known, people want to help. Yeah. You know. So so with uh, this year, when are the t-shirts going to be going on sale? Do you have a date yet? We don't have a date yet. Uh, we've uh, Heather's going to update their design because she has changed a year on it from 2020 to 2021. And when she gets that to me, uh, we've already got two different colors picked out. So we have to decide which one we want to do for the colors we always start selling early um this oh, this is april we will have shirts for sale end of next month or early june nice yeah that yeah that'll be plenty of time because mm-hmm. it seems like whenever you're promoting that you're selling t-shirts it's just a few weeks go by and i see that uh, we're running out you better hurry up and get them and and this shirt i, I think we've sold more of any other because we've actually had to order four times Wow. With this shirt. And we still have some left, so, you know, get get them now if you want them. And this was the first year we did children's shirts. Oh, yeah, yeah, because i seen uh, Jen's son. He had yes. one. I remember that picture. Yes. That was so cool. Yes. And Jessie Stumbo's little girl bought one, uh, and it would fit her like a dress because she was a little one, but it, she'll grow into it, and she looked adorable because <laughs> she had her running through a field and wearing it. She was just a little hippie chick wearing her little Wolfstock shirt. But this was – so children's – that's a new branch we're going out into the children's shirts, but see with the children's shirts, the really the extra small ones could be a puppy shirt too. Oh, yeah. you just gave me an idea. Mm-hmm. Huh? I bet that'll be cute. That I, would be cute. Mine I, won't wear clothes, so I can't put mine in. Mine would probably wear like a regular small because I have big dogs, but they will not wear clothes. It makes them furious. My, my little one won't wear like the tight sweaters or anything like that, but I can get like a cute like uh, snap. Uh, coat thing around her uh-huh. you know like something that's like not too tight that you have to get their legs in and stuff she can deal with that and yeah. she looks cute enough uh there's this one uh, it's like a uh i don't know what you call these things but you, there's a little latch on the back where you put the the uh rope the harness, harness yeah. whatever you yeah yeah harness there we go it, it's, it's a harness but it's a mini mouse harness Aww. and it, and it looks just like Minnie mouse and she has a little bow that you can put on her it's the cutest yeah, thing the in the world dog. <laughs> she's so chill that's uh, what i love about well, she, she needs a wolf stock yeah yeah oh yeah well I'm, I'm definitely taking her this year because uh yeah that's what i've that's what i love about her is i can take her places and she's not Oh, well, run, no, run no animals around around allowed at Wolfstock. I mean, you can get oh. a Wolfstock shirt. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I don't want to get that rumor out there. Oh, no. <laughs> no animals. <laughs> no. But, yeah, but yes. Well, Sean brings Zena. Because well, she well, made it to the stage one year. Well, when somebody has a voice and can play as good as Sean, then they can bring their Zena animal. Zena is to. his roadie. She helps him set up and put down. And uh, it's, it's almost like she's a member of the band. She is a member of the band. And a uh, funny story is the year before last when Sean was playing, his wife was in uh, the front selling the merchandise. And Rhonda, she's a what, dear friend of mine. She had Zena with her, and Zena was laying on the floor. And she was talking to somebody, and she looked down, and Zena was gone. no. She she looked at her phone and my friend Sherry, who sits in the front row watching this, show, had sent her a picture of Zena on stage with Sean, and she's like, "Zena's not there. She's here by no, she's not." And, and <laughs> she, but Zena had heard her daddy's voice, start singing, searched him out, and found him on stage wow. from the front of the Mountain Arts Center, and we just all loved that so much. So like you walked out there and she was just sitting beside of him there on. She stage? found her way backstage and walked to the front of the stage and sat by him. Yes. That's so cool. And of course, that makes everybody start taking pictures. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the love of a dog is you, you can't replace it. I you mean, the, the, it's unconditional. Yeah. It truly is. It's the 
probably the only form of true unconditional love you can receive from another being on yes. this planet. Yes. I'm, I mean, that, that they love you no matter what. I've had to discipline my dog before, you know, because she's done something. But still, it can be a second later, and she still loves you, well, loves me just as much. Yes. You know, it's... Uh, and, and people who abuse that animal still... Well, after they drop it off on the side of the road, they will still sit and wait for them to come back it. and look for that particular truck or that particular car. And it just breaks my heart because those people don't deserve animals. Yeah, I know it. I know it. It's whenever I get home and like I sit down and she just jumps up in my lap and starts licking my face. It's such a good feeling. And even from cats, too. I can't stand people that are like, oh, cats have no soul. They're uh, they what, whatever. Do. You. They obviously have never had a cat before. I've got four, so I I, I know. Yeah. They are just as affectionate and loving as a dog can be. Yes, if they you, are. If you, if you treat them good enough, of course. And, of course, they, they, they're, they're also... Uh, they, they like to be alone. They're yeah, kind of like so... Yeah, personalities. They're not dogs. They're cats. You know, they... Yeah. That I love cats, too. I'm just allergic to them. I just... But I can be around one or two at a time, and... I didn't know you were allergic to cats. And I've certainly transported them. I just get all sniffy and red eyed, and that's okay. It's worth it. It's 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 just an allergy. It's just an allergy. So yes. Yeah, I, I'm one of those people that like I, I'm not like a dog or a cat person. I just I, I like animal. them both. Yeah, I, I'm right. I'm an animal person. Yes, yes. But mine won't wear clothes. But I'm like of all. The shirts you could wear. Why don't you wear a Woodstock shirt? That would be so cute, but they won't. A few weeks ago, I got this back. You've probably seen it. The backpack with the uh, that you can haul cats <gasps> I around. I saw in. your picture of that. That killed me. It didn't go so good. Oh. That, that was the only picture I got, oh, no. and that's probably the only picture I'm ever going to get. It was such a great little device. I would love. To. I'd say maybe if like they were a kitten and you started them out in it, that would work. But now yeah. with them kind of being my youngest is two. So he's already pretty Cats full don't grown. Like change. No, so they I'm sort don't. of cat like that way, you know. I don't like change. Yeah, but but they're really interesting creatures and smarter than we kind of make them out to be. Oh yes, yes. I mean, I love it when mine have figured out something. You're like, you thought that out. You know, like how to mm. get to something they couldn't reach, or how to manipulate me to get up. Like my Bella can just stare me awake. You know, she doesn't have to hit me with her paws. So I'm like, how does she do this? Well, all of a sudden I just wake up and Bella's staring at me because yeah. she wants to go out. The, this one cat uh, has learned how to knock. She There's this one like a uh, swing swinging a bench there on my front porch and she knows if she jumps up in that it'll swing and hit the house so it's kind of like she that. knocks and yeah i just open up the door and she walks right in yeah. she, she knows how she knows that's what gets my attention now how smart is that now exactly you know exactly a lot of people couldn't figure that out yeah so, so many people try to think oh it's just a dumb animal well you're not living in their world like if you lived in the dog and cat world maybe you're the dumb one yeah i just don't see how they can limit you know and the people who's like you know animals don't have souls how can you limit heaven you know how can you limit mm -hmm. what you know if if the creator makes something i think he's going to love it enough to let it have the yeah. next life that goes on. I, I yeah, see. Well, well, there's that question about consciousness, you know, and where does that conscious go? Uh, animals are just as conscious as we are. We know that. I mean, we see them every day, so they have to have a soul as well, and that's the billion-dollar question nobody's ever been able to answer, whether you're religious or not, is what happens afterwards. Exactly. And, and And you would think there has to be something for dogs all dogs go to heaven they do they do and, and mark twain i think said if dogs don't go to heaven i want to go where they go you know and that's, oh, that's I like me that. you know, i that's, like that you know, always, I, I like animals more than most people on this planet yes yeah and, and it's, it's it's a shame that it's got to that point but i mean with an animal like we were saying before, it's unconditional love, and it's love that is never going to change. My dog, whenever I see her in just a little bit, even though it's only been four hours since I've seen her and I see her every single day, she's still going to be just as excited. Yes. That's, and that's how mine are, you know, and, and right now I've got a 17, almost 18-year-old. Oh, wow. I love her. Yes, and I've got wow. a 16-year-old and a 10-year-old, and every day's a gift. 
every day's a gift and they're just but they don't even look at their age you know they're just they've slowed down and you know yeah. everybody sleeps a lot more but then so do i because you know i'm <laughs> aging too and it's just we have the best life and every day i enjoy going home every day you 18 know. years old i know that is 17 cr- and a half that is age crazy i know i know I, ha, uh, I know have you ever like what kind of a dog is it he a big old brown hound and he just, he cries, all, he does that hound dog cry all yeah. the time. You know, he cries if it rains. He cries if whatever. <laughs> and and it, it, when I got the house I live in now, my new house, um, before I moved in, I had ramps put in where the steps were because old woman, old dogs do better with ramps. And he's to the point now that even he, he can go up the ramp, but if he goes down, his back legs give out. So mm-hmm. I have to be behind him with like a harness to hold him up a little bit, but he doesn't use the ramp often. It's yeah, it, it's a one-story house, so it's usually just step outside unless you're wanting to go out a different door. Yeah. So I just aim him at the doors that he can go out easier, you know, but he has brought mm-hmm. me so much joy. And, and, and they're worth all the effort, too. They are. They really are, and yeah, and it's not even effort, you know. When you know, like, and he doesn't see as well anymore, so nothing gets moved, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I've got a big, huge lantern that takes eight D batteries that I turn on every night and put in the floor. So if he gets up, he can see the shadows and stuff, so he doesn't bump in anything. Just a few little things like that. But then you'll have people who take their animals to the um, shelter because they're old and they don't want them anymore. Yeah. You know, or take them to the vet to euthanize. You know, he's yeah. fine. He's got a couple of health issues, but who doesn't when you're that old? Exactly. You know. I, I couldn't do that. I don't see how people do that. Whenever you post something on your Facebook about uh, some animal somewhere that's being abused or just in a bad situation, It makes me like I I hug my dog a little bit tighter that night because I I realize how bad a situation she could be in yeah, or just whatever. I mean, I I get teary eyed even thinking about it right now. But, yeah, it's uh, you you just you you realize it makes you a lot more thankful, so much more thankful. Oh, yeah. And I've certainly cried into fur many times. You know, it's like, oh, it's been a horrible day. I can't believe what I've seen or heard about. But... Um, and speaking of that, you know, we had actually some good bills come up at the last session in Frankfurt, but with all of the, between the pandemic, between just a lot of the drama that went on in Washington and in Frankfurt, nothing got done. You know, yeah. we didn't get any bills passed. And we had one that uh, and we're going to start again with the next, you know, when the next session fires up. Because there's a couple of people in there that actually supported the bills and w- wanted to introduce them. But it just, and I'd put on Facebook, you know, call and support, call and support. But I don't think they even cared, you know, to address it because they were so tied up in their own politics and their own yeah. partisan things. But the uh, making animal cruelty a felony was one of the things and I see on Facebook I've I used to be what I called a Facebook editor because I'd go and say this isn't right you you've misunderstood and I do it sometimes but I don't mm-hmm. a lot um, you will see and even news organizations will report this that President Trump had signed in to affect a bill making animal cruelty a felony no he had signed a bill that made a very narrow definition of animal cruelty a felony not all animal cruelty and it's something that we hardly ever see in these parts we see it but not very much what is it it's called crushing crushing what is that people step on animals small animals yeah okay yeah yeah and it had tidied up that law a little bit because there was some loose ends in that and but it's not like the people who starve the dogs or who beat the dogs or who do anything like that so we still need to get that bill passed you know we still need to get animal cruelty a felony and everybody's like oh it's already you know a felony no it's not what how i wonder how they can do that like how they can pick and choose what forms of abusement is a felony it should just be abuse it is so on, on the line. You I don't know think. why they have to. Like I don't know why they have to get so freaking technical whenever it comes to. It's laws easier like to this. get a technical one passed than a broad based one. Um, when, as we have talked about, maybe the last time I was here, you know, the last bill Kentucky passed was the year before last, and that was the, was the uh, horse one about having sex with animals. Yes, yes, yeah. and that finally got passed, and you would not believe. The feedback that special interest groups put in on that, trying to fight that. 
I mean, really. I mean, they're so I think that the um, felony what? bill that Trump signed, there was a group of people who really wanted to fight that issue. So they wrote it just for that and got it passed. OK, I can I, I can see their reasoning now. Why? What were their arguments for fighting against the bill that they did pass. There are special interest groups that I won't say on here, but if you meet me in the street, I'll tell you everybody, <laughs> uh, and and that believe animals are property, animals are disposable, and animals are here just to be used by us. And they don't like any animal humane law. I mean, they have fought us consistently. When I say us, I mean people who work harder than me at this, but I like to try to help too. They find everything, and and for this, for the um, bestiality law, they said, well, uh, farmers won't be able to artificially inseminate their. I was going to ask about uh, that. I I was going to ask if that was the case because that would be an issue that I would think of if I was a farmer. But the bill didn't even address. I mean, the it would not have even been covered under the way the bill was written. But they spread that word out. Oh, so, so, so the farmers, what, what, what the, what they do with that, that wouldn't have been affected. They would have still been able yes. to do that with their animals. Yes. And, okay. Then, yes. yeah, that's that, that's business as usual. That's not a form of cruelty. You know, it's yeah. not. And, and it's not selling a dog for sex. You know, exactly. Or doing even worse. Yes, even worse. Yeah, I mean. So it's, but, it's free. It's, it's rumors is mm-hmm. the, the fake media that people spread across social media or just eat the gossip too out in yeah. the streets drives me crazy. Oh, and the special interest group, though, the one I'm talking about, they're very powerful. They have people on every board. I mean, they have gotten they know they're smart enough to know if we can get in Frankfurt and get ourselves on committees and get ourselves, you know, some of our people even elected. We can fight all these bills. And even in their handbook of their organization, they say we do not support any giving animals any rights. You know, they just come out and say it. Wow. What, how heartless do you have to be? Yes. To, to, whenever I accidentally step on my cat or something and they're walking under me, I like I'll hold them. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'll just, I'll feel, I'll feel bad for hours yeah. after that. But, for somebody to, for animals not to have rights. So I looked this up. I, in most states, child abuse is a felony, or sometimes a less serious offense. But in most states, it's a felony for child abuse. And animals, I look at them as my children. Mm-hmm. It's the closest thing that I've got to them Me right too. now. I mean, and that that's and they really are my kids. I feed them. I make sure they have all the medications that they need to if they get sick. I. I take care of them just like I would a child. And to me, they are my fur babies. Yes. So if child abuse is a felony, I think that animal abuse should be too. Yes. Most animals are better than children. Yes. Well, yeah. Mine are better behaved than some children, certainly. <laughs> yeah. but, and, and even if you don't like animals, even and because, I, you, again, you'd be surprised how many, when we're doing a fundraiser and I'm out there in the public, people will come up to me and like, why are you doing this? Why don't you support children charities? And I do support children charities. You know, I work. I also mm. uh, do fundraisers for uh, child cases and stuff. But I'll always ask those people. It's like, tell me your charity that you donate to. Give me a, a contact person and I will donate right now. None of them can give me. Ah, it's just yes. crapping. It's just crapping. It, yeah. And, that, and that's yeah, that's it. Yeah. A lot of people do that nowadays. All they do. They just want to have an opinion and they just want to be opposite of what you say. But. Even if you don't care about animal abuse, you should know research has proven without a doubt that there is a direct correlation between people who start out abusing animals, move on to children, move on to other people who are helpless, like the elderly. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah, I, I seen this one thing on Facebook one time. It was like the line of abuse. Like it had one, it had a boss yelling at a guy. Mm-hmm. Then the guy goes home and yells at the wife, and the wife yells at the son, and the son yells at the animal. Yes, and that's that. Yeah, it, yes. it and anything like like how they say a smile is contagious. Yes, so is. So, abuse. Yes. And um, I, I have an article that was written by uh, another good friend who has been putting it to uh, like your county attorneys and showing them this information. So and let social workers. So when you see when they visit a home and see abuse of an animal, you know, right now they 
there's not really a lot of things you can do about that. Mm -hmm. But if you can get the county attorneys to know that eventually that's going to go on to that child, you know, that they're Mm -hmm. going to get tired of abusing that animal or it's going to die or run away. And they're going to start on the child because that's what the facts have proven that they do go on to children. Maybe they can get something done there, you know, because your yeah. first line are your social workers and your people who see it in the homes, you know. So, mm. and, and, and you do see that, like uh, my wife, she likes a lot of these uh, serial killer documentaries and I stuff do, like oh, that. Oh, I've lived on those podcasts. All of you white women. I don't know yes. what it is with white women and serial killers, but there's some type of thing going on there. I'm just playing around. But, but, uh, it makes me so I will never not lock my doors. And if a stranger comes up and talks to me, I'm like, run. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is some crazy stuff. But one thing that I've noticed in a lot of those stories, like nine out of 10, it starts out with them abusing animals in yes. some way. Yes, yes. Yeah. And 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 that is a fact, you know, that research backs that up. So if you don't care about the animals, at least care about the children they're going to go on to, you know. So yeah. that's why it sh- if it's a felony to abuse an animal, we can get these people out of the home. You know, we can ha- have some legal uh, discourse that we can actually put them in jail, you know, find them, get them out of the family until. But I really don't think that that can be remediated. I think if your brain is that damaged that you get joy from torturing a child or a pet, you can't be remediated. Yeah, there's ah, we, the United States needs to pick up on some Texas laws. And in, in my opinion, yeah. I mean, there's some people out there that. I just don't know if you can do anything with if there's if there's any room for change in there's that mind. Not, you know, it, and it's unfortunate. It's the prefrontal cortex. Once it's damaged, it the the theory is if it's it, it, it's your social self. You know, your ability to um, go by social norms. You know, behave appropriately in public, and it is. The first part that's it, like if you have shaken baby, you're like your eyes and your nose are have bony projectiles going inside the skull. The skull's not smooth inside. Mm. So when you're shaking a baby, it's just shearing and tearing up that prefrontal cortex. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in a car wreck as an adult, you'll get some damage to the prefrontal cortex, like when you hit the dashboard or something. If it's damaged in an adult, some good behavior mod can get them back on track again. If mm-hmm. it's damaged as a child... Research says that they can never learn that. So I think that's where a lot of your serial killers come from because they start early with, you know, hurting the animals and stuff. Mm -hmm. They just don't see the reason not to. You know, they don't Hmm. have that empathy. They don't develop that, which is why Hmm. we need to make sure children are not in situations to where there might be abuse. You know, if you're seeing Hmm. that animal being abused by the parent, that child's probably going to be too, you know. Shaking yeah. and stuff. And shaking baby, you don't notice the symptoms of it until they don't reach the milestones later on. They don't sit upright. They don't walk. They don't talk, you know, on yeah. time. Huh. So. That's that's interesting because, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you don't see like a lot of adults that all of a sudden turn into serial killers. It's, it usually starts from birth. Starts from birth. Wow. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I don't. One time I was in a vet. I'm not going to say which vet, but there was a woman in there who actually said the words like, I don't see how y'all pay this much money for animals. To me, it's just a dog. I'm like, lady, you probably don't need to be saying that in here. Like, you are in the wrong spot. We will attack say. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most, most, like I said, most animals are better than most people. And I think that... Everybody has some type of animal they can love. I know I have friends that have weird pets out there, like lizards and snakes. Snakes, yes, yeah, snakes is a big one. Even yeah. like spiders and stuff like that. I'm not that way, but they love their tarantula just as much as I love my dog. And yeah. I think that everybody will have some type of animal out there for them. Yeah. And I would find never it. torture one. I mean, I don't like snakes. You know, to the point that even if it's a water hose in the yard, I run screaming because I think it might be a snake. Yeah, but. I would never torture one. You know, I'm just no. like, you go over there, I'm going to go over here, just moose snake. You know? Yeah, I've tried to, uh, see, like, I hate spiders. That was, a, that was a big thing to me. And before, like, I would just go ahead and squash them. But now I'll, like, get them on a piece of paper and take them outside <laughs> if I have to. It, I'm terrified the entire time, but I, <laughs> but I still make that effort. Bees are one that, uh, I, I, well, not bees, wasps, yeah. waspers. Bees make waspers. honey, and honey is good. See, now, and bees won't mess with you. Bees will keep their distance. Waspers, I don't know what it, I don't know why they're so angry. I don't know who hurt them. I, that, that frontal frontal cortex on the, the waspers, yeah. They, yes, they've they've hurt are, themselves. Are they good somehow. for anything? 
What do they do? What do wasps do? They pollinate? Do? do they do? I don't know what they 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 attack people. I know that. But that is that is one animal that uh yes I will yeah. still kill. Well, I have to look to see if there's any use for wasps. I mean they're here for some reason, but you know, fleas. I don't see the use for a flea. I don't you know. Yeah, and, and fleas are bad this time. Ticks, ticks. ticks no, I meant ticks. Ticks are the bad one this year. Uh, I had a friend that uh said that she didn't even like her dog didn't even go in the grass it was still just on the sidewalk and already had like three ticks on them yeah and you have to watch that because you know dogs can get lyme disease just like people you know and people need to watch for themselves when they go out because it is a and you would think with as bad a winter as we had which is supposed to kill all these little critters out they're back in force yeah it's been like a super tick or something that's developed it, it, from this it, yeah who knows who, who knows, knows? it's a tick 19 now yeah. Yeah, who knows yeah. <laughs> but but apparently here uh, while wasps provide pest control while they can also kill some beneficial insects they can be helpful in eating crop destroying bugs such as grubs caterpillars and weevils then they need to go somewhere where those are because none of those are in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they need to go find a nice farm and, and live happily there and kill the grubs and the beetles. I don't know what a grub is. I've never heard of that. Grub has always been a... Grub bug? I don't know. Just go eat your grub. I've always heard it as a slang term for food. <laughs> it is. Oh, it's like a little bug like a looking thing. Bag? A lawn grub. That's what they're oh. usually called. They're white. Uh-huh. Hmm. Like a little worm or something? Yeah, it's got, kind of like, like like a little uh, roly-poly. Oh, Kind of like those. I haven't seen those things in a few years. What I happened know. to roly-polies? I know. Those little, that roll up in the, the little shell. I don't know. Okay, here, here's a question that I have for you. And uh, not not to get too graphic for our listeners or anything, but I just, I really want to know this. Oh, no. and, and I don't know if you'll know or so. not. I know the answer. To- I don't know if you will or not, but you're the only person I really know to ask this. So, if I remember right, dog poop used to turn white back in the day. Do uh-huh. you remember that? Like, I, it, it, I had dogs growing up, and, 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 and it turned white after a while. Mm-hmm. I don't see that now. Well, I'm just honored that you would think I would know the answer to that, <laughs> and I wish I did. It's, it just gives me so much more credit than I ever deserve. I did, I, you're, you're the animal person. I didn't know. <laughs> if I had to take a guess, it's probably totally wrong, but... It's my opinion, and you know how people are with opinions. Um, I'd say it's in what animals are eating now that's different than the old days. In the old days, dogs pretty much just ate kibble, you know, especially when I was growing up. Mm. And it could be, um, and now dogs eat a lot of wet food, a lot of designer food. Even the dry yeah. food is grain free, this or this, sensitive stomach. It could be some of the preservatives and some of the stuff in the food now, whereas in the old days, it was Alpo or Twin Pet, you know, Alpo if yeah. you had money, Twin Pet if you didn't. And so it could just be that, that it breaks down easier in the sunlight and stuff. I think it is, because I've never Googled this. It's always just been that question in the back of my mind that I think of in spur of the moment situations like this. But here's what Google had to say. White poop in this day and age can be caused by a raw diet with too much calcium. Dogs that are fed a well-balanced raw diet typically produce normal poops. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say all the words that technical words they use, but normal. I'll say, I'll say that. I'll say so. Yeah, it's a good thing my dog has normal poops. I guess normal poops. That's right. Yeah, yeah they just yeah. Back in the day, that was it. And uh, the the foods nowadays, I love how they can be so specific with it because I have a cat that has a. Uh, UTI mm-hmm. issues, and I can get this one type of food that helps with that yeah. and uh yeah he's not had a problem with it since. it contributes to lifespan you know and that, that's yeah. a good thing because they had nothing your animal would just die 30 years ago you know because yeah. they didn't but, have stuff like that you, you know all of mine get foods. a senior food it's supposed to help with cognition and clarity in which i'm not sure how you measure that in a dog <laughs> yeah. but mine always know me when i come home so maybe that's a good thing but and because it's got a little bit more protein a little bit more stuff that would hurt a younger dog you know yeah. so as as they get older so i'm grateful you know to Give them the senior dog food. What do you use for uh, fleas and ticks? Do you use a collar or do you do like the little drops? I use, um, I have a couple of things. Um, I use the drops on the back, the front line, and then there's a front line spray that you don't need a prescription to get. Mm -hmm. And I like it because it lasts for 30 days and you can spray it all over them so it's not being concentrated in one spot on Mm. them. And it does fleas and ticks. 
Okay. And, and you just spray this and like it stays there for 30 days? 30 days. You rub it, you shampoo it in. Yeah. You don't You don't give them a bath for a day or two, which mine hardly ever get a bath. They're old yeah. and they just lay in bed all day. And yeah, and it works. It gets in their system mm. through all their fur. You know, it's just not really concentrated in one spot. It goes in everywhere. So you can just give a light spray and give... Where do you, where do you get this at? To, you can get, let's see, Chewy has it. Yeah, Chewy's awesome. I love I Chewy. I love Chewy. They bring yeah. it right. I get those 30-pound bags of dog food, and yeah. I don't have to drag it out of the car. So, yeah, you can look for Chewy for that. And, and it does really good, and a lot of rescue people I know use it when they get all their pups in, and they have to give them a quick spray. Mine hmm. do good on that. You know, but, cool. but I have my backyard. I will not put trees and shrubs and bushes in there because, to me, those are just flea traps. Yeah. yeah. So... Mine don't get in tall grass. Mine don't. You know, they just have the backyard. You know, that's good. And uh, so, and I and I use a flea comb on mine. I do a check all the time to make sure that there's no fleas on them with a flea comb. A flea comb's mm. really, really tight together, little tines on a on a comb. Yeah, I have one of them little uh, things. I, I <clears throat> excuse me. I hadn't seen one until uh, one of my friends gave me her animals because she couldn't take care of them anymore, and she had one in the pack, and I just never. Uh, this was the only house I've ever lived in where I could have animals uh-huh. besides growing up. So, yeah, I'd never seen one before. That's a yeah. neat little looking comb. Well, and here's a neat trick for you. Um, like if you do comb the mm-hmm. cat, you know, I would comb my dogs and there would be the flea on the comb, but then it would jump. Yeah. Because you know, those yeah. little suckers get a, a disposable cup, fill it with alcohol, rubbing alcohol. As soon as you comb them, stick it in there and it stuns them so, mm. so they can't jump. And it, and then I always like dip the comb in the alcohol and give a quick rub. And it's uh, but as soon as they're on that comb, stick it in the alcohol, and it stuns them. I didn't know that. I know because yeah, I've had that problem too, and I just got to where I would just do you it comb outside. Them, they jump, and you're like, well, the flea's still alive. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's in my house. Yeah. So yeah, I've just been doing it outside, and because of that problem, mm-hmm. actually, that's a neat little yeah. trick. It's a neat little trick. And do then, you use the uh, Soresto collars at all? I don't because mine don't do good with collars. They won't wear them. They'll pull them off each other and play tug of war with them. Yeah. And um, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> but yeah, they, they, there was that thing that came out where this resto was harming some smaller animals. Yeah, I, I seen that, and I uh, talked with a few vets around the area too yeah. because that's all I've used for the last few years. Yeah. And uh, from what they told me, and this is not. This is from a vet. Uh, they they said that the, these animals may have had underlying health issues that may have. Uh, the Soresto collars could have attributed to. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I've used them for four years now and have never had one problem out. And the other thing is where you get them. Yeah. Um, their Amazon is horribly notorious for having counterfeit. Yeah, a lot yeah. of knockoff stuff. And people think, it, it, with the flea and tick stuff, you know, I, I don't trust them. And, and it's stored in warehouses where the heat gets unbearable and probably changes the composition of it. Yeah. Uh, well, your flea and tick places will not guarantee the results unless you do get it from a vet. Yeah, and, so, and that's the, I mean, we're better of a place to get it from yeah. than your actual Because they're going to have the vet. real deal. They're mm-hmm. going to store it under <laughs> conditions that it's not going to lose potency or get too potent. So, yeah, that's, um, and, and I think that might be some of that Soresto issue is that it might have been counterfeit ones. It might have been yeah, like and that, animals that were ill. That's, that's, uh, that's, I didn't think about the counterfeit, and yeah, that would make sense. People have to be really careful, though. One time... Uh, I about lost one of my cats. I forget what type of collar it was. I don't want to say the name of the company, but uh, began with an H. Let's say that. So, uh, and she was having seizures almost every day. It seemed like, and we didn't know what in the world was going on. And I just to be completely honest. We were this is when we just at first moved. We were low on funds and couldn't afford all Soresto collars. Right. So uh, for a few of them we bought these cheaper ones and yeah she actually had seizures because of it and we finally got enough money to get the Soresto and just got that one off over and got there on as soon as possible and she's doing fine now years later but uh yeah I, I had no idea that if well that uh vets not vet but uh taken flea collars can do something like that to an animal and the medicine that you get at big discount stores the flea stuff it's not 
uh, calibrated always, right? So some doses may be too weak, some doses may be too strong, and your animals can have seizures from that too. Yeah, I had no idea, and it scared the crap out of me. And I'd say a lot of people out there don't know either, so people be careful. My mom had that same collar on a cat, and... It took all the fur off the back. Of it done the same thing with ours too, and uh, also her tail too. Like, well, I mean, kind of like almost down her whole back. Yeah. Like there was a lot of treatments we had to get her on to get her back yeah. to full from that. She's but, been miserable. But it's it's weird though because like before she was a very uh, secluded cat. She stayed away from everybody and uh, just didn't interact a lot with the other cats, and a lot the other cats would bully her. Too, and uh, that that was always sad to see. But for some reason, after she had all those seizures, it's like she's a different cat, but in a good way. Like she sticks up for herself now. She'll run the other cats through the house. It's weird. I don't. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. It, uh, so I mean, I'm not. It's I'm changed not, your brain a little bit. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but it's <laughs> it. The, it's I'm, good I'm, for her. I'm glad that the circumstances came out the way that they did. Yes. I'll say that. Yes. That makes me happy. I'm glad she's fine. I'm glad she recovered. But, and you know, going through something like that makes you a stronger cat. So she's probably. Yeah. And, and it also makes you love your animals a little bit more, too. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, whenever you come in that, come in such a close call. Like one time uh, I was walking my dog outside and I was checking the mailbox and just didn't pay attention for a split second. And for some reason, up in my holler, you're supposed to drive 10 miles an hour. But people want to drive 60, it seems like. And there was this one vehicle just bucking towards it. And my dog had got out into the middle of the road. And I, like, legit, it was like a movie scene. Like, I jumped in the road and kind of, like, pushed her out of the road. And I was still laying there. Yeah, and, and, like, the, the car slammed on the brakes and stopped probably here to those chairs away from me to slam they had to slam on their brakes so you heard the whole er, and everything and i just realized that moment like i love this animal so much i'm willing to die for it yes it's yes. A, a a love that you cannot explain to anybody else and, and, and i some people will say that about kids and mm-hmm. i've never understood that because i'm not a big kid person but i get it now i get it now. yeah yeah i, I totally get it and, you know, I'm, and I'm sure you're the same way, but when they say, like, the weather is really bad or a chemical spill and you have to evacuate, I could not evacuate if I couldn't take my dogs with me. Yeah. I'll just stay here and we'll all just get through yeah. it together. Got to do what we got to do. I don't see I, – I, that's that's heartbreaking situations, too, whenever you see a big hurricane yeah. and there's well, all that stuff. And, you know, for, for, the, for the love of God, people, unchain your dog if a flood's coming and you're evacuating, so at least it has a chance. You know, yeah. there, w- there are wonderful people who get in boats and have the bolt cutters, and they go in neighborhoods and free these dogs that are literally standing on their dog houses with the water rising. You know, yeah. and they're chained, and they can only go so far. That's, so, that's terrible. Uh, you what, know, what, give them a chance. What should people do if they see a situation like that going on, like just a- abuse of any form? Yeah, go... You know, go through the channels, call the local police first, you know, uh, call your shelter and find out who your ACO is, the animal control officer. A lot of counties or cities and sometimes counties have ordinances. You know, uh, Prestonsburg just ha- started a wonderful list of ordinances for the city. And we're going to try to get it also for the county as well in terms of you can't tether a dog to a short chain for more than so many hours a day. You know, you can't. That's good. That's good. Uh, what, uh, do you know, like, how long of a chain they're considering a th- short? There, are, Yeah, there's – and it's certain types of chains, too. I could nice. send you the information. Good. It, it just good. can't be a big logging chain, you know, with a padlock on the end of it. I've seen there, a lot of people certain, do that. Yes. Yeah. This has got to be a swivel one. It's got to be – there's a certain kind of it and a certain length of it and – certain temperatures that the dog can't be out in you know so you're not going to see a dog out and so in the really cold weather really hot weather um yeah i've seen a lot of uh images that you shared on your facebook during the uh winter months about animals outside it breaks my heart you know just bring them in um yeah a garage even is better than anything you know and and if you won't let your animal come inside in bad weather like that why do you have it why exactly. do you have Exactly. But so call the ACO and they will know the rules. If they don't do anything, keep going up until you get to the Kentucky State Police. 
I've been really happy that the Kentucky State Police has been uh, doing some raids on some places lately. Yeah, you were telling me about a big one that, uh, was it Johnson County? No. Said? No, not Johnson no. County. So, so, so sorry, Johnson County. My bad, my bad. Not, not Johnson County. Um, M- Montgomery County. Montgomery County. I don't know how I got that yeah. mixed up. Oh, well, because I work in Johnson County. Well, that might have been That's it. That's yeah. it. Johnson, yeah. Johnson's a nice county. Um, they, um, it was a cat rescue, and... Um, the person, I think, started out maybe with good intentions and then just got overwhelmed because they are elderly, too. And people had been complaining. Um, advocates for animals, other rescuers had been saying they've got too much. It's going downhill. The animals, while you know, what do you define as mistreatment, you know, uh, when you're not really beating an animal, but you're not giving it enough food or enough health care and you've got it in conditions where it's going to stay ill. That also is abuse, you know, but some people don't see that that way. So the Kentucky State Police and um, another big rescue went in and started seizing these animals. And it was 200 cats and 100 dogs. Oh, my God. In, in one house? No, they had them in several big trailer type. Oh, okay. okay. And, uh, but very little vetting. They said um, a lot of them were sick. Mm. And yeah. what kind of life is that for an animal, you know? And and uh, they just took in too many and got overwhelmed, I think. Yeah, And, and, and I, I would say that there's a lot of situations out there like that, maybe. That there's a lot. It, it, it starts out as somebody wanting to do a good thing, and unfortunately it just becomes too much. You get compassion much. fatigue to where you can't say no, even though, like, I I had four dogs. I lost one in October. And four dogs is my limit yeah. in terms of what I can feed and vet and take care of, you know. And right now three dogs, being as old as they are, is my limit. And I see dogs all the time. It's like, I could love to take that one, and I would love to take that one. But then Shaw turns into a hoarder, and then yeah. somebody has to come in and take 50 dogs from my house, you know, where we're living in squalor. So you have to know your limits yeah. and and do stuff. Yeah, I'm at my limit right now. We just had another uh, stray cat show up. And I, I've seen him all around the neighborhood. Uh-huh. But for some reason, he likes to hang out around our house it's now. It's a cool house. Yeah, and with plenty of food, he 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 knows that now. But that's my limit, and I, I, he stays outside too. Mm-hmm. Whenever it gets cold, I'll let him come in. But most of the time, I think he just likes being outside more anyway. There's I have another cat. Her name is Patches. She's been outside most of her life, mm-hmm. and she'll come in to sleep. But mm-hmm. she likes being outside. So them two play with each other. I keep them outside. But yeah, I'm at my limit right now. With I got Patches, Clover, Edgar, Lubu. And we named this one Pretty Boy, the oh. new one to show it. So I got five cats and a dog. That's my limit. And two of the cats mostly stay outside. So four animals and on the that's inside. that's a lot of pet food to buy. Yes. Especially with the uh, how I was uh, Edgar, he's the one that has to have the special kind of uh, food. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's not cheap. No, it's not. You <laughs> but, know, it's a big business, you know, with the animal uh, food and all the specialties, especially if you have a special needs yeah. you know, animal. It's It can be... But I, they're, they're they're worth it all. They're worth it all. That's right. And yeah, I, I will always have animals. You know, the these people who lose their dog and they're like, oh, I can't ever get another one. It's like, yes, you can. You know, it's you love that dog and now you can show more love to another dog. You know, so I yeah. will always have dogs. Yeah. Whenever I hit the lottery, I'm going to buy a huge piece of property with a bunch of trees and stuff like that. <clears throat> build some big walls so they can't get out and just let them roam free. I, I'd love to just adopt all the animals. Oh, there's so many of us that would do that. You know, when yeah, and, and, I, and I love how a lot of the shelters around the area, too, are making it so affordable now, too. Yes. Like a lot of times, uh, I see sometimes where they even do free events every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it's even little as five dollars and i think the uh pike county animal shelter i know for sure is doing like 20 and 25 Mm -hmm. and i'll hear people spend these outrageous amounts of money on a dog and i'm still glad that that dog or cat is finding Mm -hmm. a home but i'm like man for that much money you could buy out the entire shelter yes but to each his own you know at least they're still getting a home well, but can't be too mad about that's it. That's another note I wrote to talk about was backyard breeders. You know, um, people who want a breed animal, I'm okay with that. And I actually don't hate all breeders because a good breeder will breed once a year. Will And it's hard to be a breed a good breeder because you have to look at the genetics of both of the dogs. Notice if any uh, traits are coming through that they should not breed again. 
Um, but then that's not what we have here. We have the backyard breeders. And if you are buying an animal from someone and you're paying that much money and they will not let you come and look at where those mama dogs and papa dogs live, I guarantee they're in a crate. Their fur is so matted that they can barely move their legs. And all they do is push out puppies yeah. every couple of months. Um, and that when you pay big money for that, like if they have to meet you at a gas station to deliver your puppy or something like that, they probably have horribly inhumane conditions and you mm-hmm. should not be supporting that. Um, no, and, and it breaks my heart whenever you see those pictures too. Like the uh, one house that was overran with cats. I think you posted a picture of it a few months ago that had them in the, the trash cans and yeah. stuff like that. Oh, yeah. and the dogs and cats there too. And, yeah. um, you know, but shelters have breed dogs, you know, if you want a purebred dog, which mutts are healthier. You know, I love a mutt. All mine are mutts. Um, if you um, if you buy from a breeder, make sure you can see. Don't just go into the living room. Go back to where they keep the kennels. Check yeah. these animals out. The last dog I transported was a um, Labradoodle. Oh. And doodles are destroying yeah they're huge too yeah they're huge that's the the big uh curly haired afro looking dogs they they made everything with a poodle you've got golden doodles labradoodles yeah i have a cousin that has golden blah blah doodles you know but it's just somebody who has a poodle and finds something to mix with it and then they sell it for like fifteen hundred dollars this this was a labradoodle bought from a breeder um a bit crazy, so they tied him up outside. I finally got him, took him to Tennessee to my golden rescue. And bless his heart, he had, um, and we've seen three of this in, in mixed dogs, a condition where your lower eyelids turn inward, so every time you blink, your uh, rough fur scratches the cornea. Mm. So he was in pain, which was one reason he was crazy. He was a poorly bred doodle. His fur even looked like the, the vet said the earlier versions of the the doodles that came out of me because it looked like a bad perm. It was like yeah. really rough but not really curly. So he had a lot of strikes against him, but they they had surgery on him. They're going to have to do surgery again because they said sometimes it still flips back no matter what they do. Mm. Um, so he's going to get another surgery. Uh, he's working with a behavior specialist to try to <laughs> learn some manners. So dogs have anger management. Oh, they, 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 yes, they have. They have behavior specialists that just work with dogs and teach wow. them not to counter surf, teach them not to you know be so crazy. But my heart breaks because there's other doodles out there that's got that same condition that they're in pain, their eyes are hurting all the time, and constant tears and stuff. And nobody's getting vet help for them. You know, somebody Mm. just bought a doodle because they wanted it, and then it got all crazy, so they either set them out or put them outside and never offer them any help. So you've got, there's a lot of genetic conditions that are specific, like Goldens get cancer a lot, you know. Um, And you've got to check into that and do, look at the animals that are born from those animals, and do they have these conditions? And we've had a couple of golden puppies that were born with uh, misshapen paws, you know, half a leg. Mm -hmm. Just from irresponsible breeders, and there, there's so many, especially around here. Oh, it's I've, huge I've around here. It's huge around and, here, and, and, and I get that it's a big money racking and stuff like that. But I think that uh, you know, as information like this comes out, people will start realizing it a little bit more. I yes. at least hope so. Yes, I mean the shelters. Usually they would they know the background of the dog, or at least can tell you a little bit about it. I mean, it's not like you're getting just a dog with a question mark on its head they'll yeah. let you know because that's that's one argument that i hear a lot about people is like oh the breeder they know the dog or whatever the breeders will lie about the dog yes they will and a lot of these shelters around the area that is their job like they get shut down if they don't do the necessary things that they have to do some of these breeders just won't care and like you said we'll meet you at double quick yes and, so, and hand you this beautiful little puppy that ends up being a horrible little puppy as it grows. Now, um, oops, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Uh, Jackie Brown at our Floyd County shelter. I have to say that woman can tell you anything about any of those animals. She knows them just like you would know your best friend. Um, Mm. I contacted her one time about um, somebody was looking for a barn cat, but they wanted a friendly barn cat that could play with the kids and stuff like that instead of a feral cat. And she had the perfect cat. She had a cat that, for some reason, would not use a litter box. 
you know, well, that's perfect for outdoors, you know, because there's no litter box. Yeah. But it just could, it would not use the litter box, but it was friendly. It loved loving. And she's like, well, I know it can't be indoors since it won't have a litter box. But she knew its behavior. She knew its characteristics and she was able to match it to the perfect owner. Oh, you know? that's so, awesome. You know, so your pet stores don't know that. You're, you know, but uh, when you have a good shelter with a good uh, person like Jackie working there, she can tell you, you know, well, you don't want this one because it's big and it likes to jump or you know you do want this one because it's an older dog and it likes to sleep all the time and if it's somebody's looking for something for their grandma or something you know that would be a perfect one that they could just walk yeah. in the evenings and come home and it would be calm so uh, shelters are great places to check out as breed specific rescues are too you know there's adopt a golden in uh, knoxville that i work with there's a lot of breed specific you can google you know uh boxer rescues golden rescues and and get your animal from there because they mm-hmm. send them to a foster parent to work with to learn its quirks is it good with cats is it good with kids and then they'll match you up with the perfect animal yeah the, the animal shelters around here do a fantastic job there's a lot of them that are no kill and i love that about them but you know mm-hmm. that also creates problems like how we were talking about with them being overran yes. so if you really love animals and you want to make a difference whenever it comes to the animal community in the area whenever you're looking next time check out your shelters and if you can't adopt at this time go help at a shelter yeah you can all well i I see a lot of people around the area volunteering, and I love that. But even if you don't have the time to volunteer, uh, what me and my wife do, we donate items. Yes. You can also do that. They need as much as they can get. Oh, you know, it's always food, uh, any kind of blankets yeah, or blankets sheets because one. they do a ton of laundry. But then when you have a litter of Parvo pups, you just can't wash that blanket and use it again. That has to be tossed. Yeah. You know, so they always can use blankets and they can always, you know, if you've got a, a comforter you don't use anymore, that would be great for a mama and her puppies. You know, so towels, anything like that when you're cleaning out your linen closets and they don't care it has a hole in it. They don't care if it's got a stain on it as long as it's been washed. Take it in and, and donate that because there's always something. And then sometimes just cash because they've got utilities to pay you exactly. know, and, st- and special vetting stuff. So it, there's always a way to contribute. There's always a way. Yeah, they're w- wonderful people. And especially with what y'all do, I mean, it's, it's so heartwarming to see so much love for animals in our community. Eastern Kentucky, it's a, it, it's a special place whenever it comes to people caring about animals. Like the uh, old Les down there in Prestonsburg. I, I don't know if it, I think it was a year before last because this has to be a while ago now. Do you remember when he rescued the dog in the middle of the intersection? Yes. So I, cool. Yes. That almost made me move to Prestonsburg that day. I'm like, that's such a cool mayor. Such a cool mayor, yes. yes. He's yeah, very Les. supportive of anything we're trying to do for animals. Yeah, yeah. the, the whole community down there seems to be that way with it, him, Samantha, uh, Steve. They, they, they all, it's it's a group effort, it seems yes. like. Yes. And every you know, and like I said, you don't have to have animals, which most of us do, to support. You know, there's yeah. always something you can do. And um, I'm always thrilled, like for Wolfstock, bringing it back to that, all the store owners put our posters up, you know, yeah. uh, and, and support us and do what they can and make donations. You know, when I don't think we're going to be able to do our sweet fixings this year just because the room we have it in is too small to have any amount of stuff but they would always donate you know silent auction items and stuff for that yeah so So for the people that want to uh, check out the animal alliance of eastern kentucky and help out with that or check out wolfstock 2021 (laughs) i'm so excited how do they go about doing all that look at our website aaeky.org and that is how you uh if you need to donate to us we have a contact us thing we have our paypal on there We have our snail mail. You can send us a check um, because everything goes to the animals. None of us get a salary. None of us get paid for anything at all. Um, It is a labor of love for us. And so 100% of it goes to the animals. Or if you want to buy a T-shirt, there's an email where you can email us and and we can hook you up with a shirt. Uh, Follow us on Facebook, Animal Alliance of East Kentucky. We, uh, that's where we post about Wolfstock. That's where we mm-hmm. post new things we're doing. Um, if we're out of shirts or if we're needing specific things, we'll let you know through there. Shaw, thank you so much. Thank you so you, much. You are a wonderful person. Everybody that you work with are doing a terrific job. And just thank you to all of y'all for everything that you do for our community. It's a good group. We we do a good job, I think. So. Yes, you do. Yes. Well, Shaw, thanks again. And uh, we'll be seeing you in, at Wolfstock 2021. Yay. Thank you so much. I'm excited. See y'all next week, folks.
Boom. All right. 